Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 28th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Look at the ridge of high pressure still dominating the Pacific Northwest. Classic Rex block situation still going on with a closed low across the desert southwest. But we've got changes afoot here. We've got stuff moving out across northern latitudes and this is going to eventually slide down the west coast of North America towards the Pacific Northwest. we got Arctic air on the way to British Columbia. How much of that will spill out into the Pacific Northwest as portions of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, for example, versus just staying bottled up here across British Columbia. We're also going to have this upper level low. The, the track of it is going to mean everything as far as snowfall potential is concerned west of the mountains. A very difficult forecast, very complex. And we'll also take a look at just how long this pattern may last as we go on in through the month of February. Again, kind of showing you what a Rex block setup is there. The closed low over Southern California and the ridge of high pressure dominating the Pacific Northwest. Now, if we take a look at this, look at this, what I got this morning. So this is cold air drainage between Three Tree Point and Burien, the high hill over there versus Normandy Park. And that spills out over the Puget Sound. That very chilly air there picks up some moisture, condenses and moves out across the Puget Sound. And this can actually produce steam devils sometimes as well. So I was hoping to catch some of that. Doesn't look like it was quite deep enough to do so, but I do like capturing this on time lapse. You can see the reversing wind directions here just off the surface out over the Puget Sound as well. So yeah, fun stuff. Now, taking a look here, you can see that fog moving around the Puget Sound there. You can see it into some of the interior valley areas, Okanagan River Valley here into Idaho, Panhandle, Western Montana. But again, once you're above some of those lower clouds, it's just going to be another glorious day out there. You can see Mount Rainier and Mount Baker, the snow-capped mountains across British Columbia, and some of that marine there trying to get close to the northern tip of Vancouver Island, but nice and sunny up and down the Washington, Oregon coast. And again, you can kind of see that fog moving around there on the GOES-18 satellite imagery in and around the Puget Sound. And uh, the Okanagan River Valley. You can see it bubbling and moving around. There was even some eddy features moving along the side of the terrain there also. And you can kind of see that if I zoom in there. So yeah, goes 18 satellite imagery. Always fun to watch. Now I've gone up towards uh, Lemon Creek here or Winlaw there in British Columbia. Pretty chilly out there. Another cool thing about this Tempest Weather Station will tell you what kind of advisories, watches, and warnings you are under. This right now you got partly cloudy skies. Negative five, that is in Celsius, of course. So highly recommend that station. Click on the link down below to save 10% off on one. So again, the big question is how much of this Arctic air is going to sag south here? And this is, I believe, Missoula, Montana National Weather Service. And uh, you can see Great Falls is here. There's Missoula. There's Helena. So we're just kind of keeping the alarm open right now. We're not full on sounding it, but you want to be aware of this setup coming up here because, man, the models have been in some flux and it is a really close call for whether or not some areas are going to get snowfall versus others. But the good news is the mountains are probably going to get nice amounts out of this. And again, some very cold air could be trying to work its way down into some places. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But also across places like Browning and Cutbank, we'll get some of these winds here kicking up as we go through Wednesday into Wednesday night. So you got some high wind warnings that are in effect out there. You can see Great Falls, not nearly as windy, but still fairly gusty here. Uh, again, the Rocky Mountain front and adjacent plains, very windy Wednesday and Wednesday night. Now, uh, Portland National Weather Service uh, trying to hint at the snowfall potential coming up here. You notice they don't throw anything in there for the lower elevations right now. The confidence is so low, and plus it may not occur until after February 3rd. So we're going to, I'll show you the latest on that here in a moment. So just got to stand by with me here. Now, take a look. You can see the North American model picking up some of the low clouds out there fairly well. Mostly, you know, a lot of that burns off, but not all of it. I should point that out. And then as we go through tonight, you can see it kind of fills in a little bit thicker than what it was this morning. Tries to burn it off as we go through the day Wednesday and then Thursday morning, one more day of some morning fog. And then we start the pattern change. We're going to bring a frontal system, mountain snow, lowland rain initially with these systems coming in here. And then I'll show you what's coming up with the colder air working its way south. So the latest on the GFS, hot off the presses, 12Z, 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, general ridge and trough position. There goes our ridge finally flattening out and starting to weaken. Seems like it's been with us for an eternity. And you can see this polar lobe 
taking a swing here at the Pacific Northwest. And what is so tricky about this is just these small changes in the track, these upper level winds and the upper level support is going to make all the difference in the world on what kind of lower elevation snowfall potential we're going to have across Southwest BC, Vancouver Island, Western Washington, Willamette Valley, and the coastal ranges, and even into Eastern Washington, Idaho, and Montana also. And you can kind of see this is a pretty chilly scenario on the 12Z GFS, but the GFS has not been very consistent. I'm just going to show on it here, and then we're going to compare it to what the European is showing in a moment. But this would be, you know, you'd probably get some lower elevation snowfall out of a situation like this eventually with this cold upper low level low kind of spinning right off the coastline there and kind of doing the funky chicken over the Pacific Northwest and then finally kicking off to the east there. Now, if we take a look at the ensemble mean, I'll put this into motion. Same thing, 12Z run. You can kind of see, of course, not quite as cold there, but you can see still pretty chilly upper level low, very close. You got to watch the position of this as we get a bit closer. Now, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence, this gives you a good idea where the Arctic air is. This is last night's run, and you can clearly see it moving across Alaska, down into British Columbia, and a lot of this does spill out over the Pacific Ocean. So it's going to be creating some cyclogenesis and probably keeping some of the winds at the surface across places west of the Cascades, uh, uh, southwesterly, at least for a while. The upper level air is going to be kind of chilly at times, and we could leak some of that Arctic air out. We'll see how that goes, but there's no guarantees coming up here just because this arctic air gets this close does not by any means mean a slam dunk for places into western washington or western oregon or southwest bc for that matter for some snowfall but with that arctic air close by it doesn't take much and just a small amount of it leaking out with some overriding moisture could really create some heavy snowfall amounts especially across southwest bc and some portions mainly northern uh, north of seattle here i gotta point that out i want to kind of make that apparent there with the upper level lows sitting nearby and some of this arctic air trying to leak out you can really bring some surprise heavy snowfall so i just want to kind of point that out and i'm going to continue to do so here over the next few days now let's look take a look at the 12z european and see if this is actually loading there's been some extreme te technical difficulties here with weather bell and the european model so we're going to scroll through this to 12z it looks like it's loading just fine right now but it's been skipping some huge portions of the runs Looks like it's doing okay right now since I up, uh, updated it. But you can see this very uh, chilly upper level low, this polar lobe, just kind of hanging off the coastline there. And this would mainly keep things out of the south. But again, there's going to be a pivot point here where things would start to leak out. If it drops down here, this could start to be a problem for some lower elevation snow. Uh, pretty chilly solution here on the 12Z European model. But again, would be quite the marginal event. And this would really go down to the wire for you know these individual rounds of moisture moving back up across the region. Some very chilly air aloft right on the borderline of bringing down some lower elevation snowfall. Then you've got the fact that some Arctic air may be trying to leak out into portions of Vancouver Island, Southwest BC, or across the Strait here in Northwest Washington, just all kinds of scenarios. And again, very cold air aloft right off the coastline. <laughs> this is kind of a, a nightmare forecast here for meteorologists. Is this thing, again, kind of doing the funky chicken on us all the way on in through February 6th uh, as we get towards the end of the 12Z run. This is hot off the presses. The first time I have seen it here on Weatherbell, it finally ran. Glad to see it. Uh, now, just some notable differences here in about 300 millibars, 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere. You can see kind of that cross polar flow develop at least briefly does kind of get pinched off here a bit and you see how it gets uh, extended back out across the water on the artificial intelligence versus the GFS which brings us a bit further south which introduce some better cold air into the Pacific Northwest so these are some of the differences we're dealing with here over the next few days these pattern this track here uh, at 300 millibars really means everything on just how much cold air is allowed to get out into some of the lower elevations as well now, taking a look at the GFS and the 12Z. So this is why we got to use caution here because people are sharing these snow maps and they're kind of getting excited about what the GFS is showing. And granted, the 12Z GFS, fairly chilly, but you'll notice how even in the wake, this low pressure is up here. These are still southerlies at the surface. And it wants to show some of this convergent zone snowfall activity here, trying to drive the snow level down towards the surface, which is plausible. 
when the cold air aloft starts rushing in here, but it's again going to be a very marginal setup and it would not be that great at sticking in the lower elevations here because you haven't got that Arctic outflow yet. The air is not going to be that cold at the surface. But then you see the upper level low start to pivot right off the coastline here. And that's when things would start to get interesting. You start to bring some of that Arctic air out. You got the moisture around, you're spinning it around. And that's when we would be worried about some lower elevation snowfall. So if we're going to take anything from this, you're going to want to watch this and check back daily. And we're going to be watching this upper level low. And by the time we get on towards Sunday and Monday, if the GFS were to verify, that's when you'd be looking at some snowfall Sunday and on into Monday morning here across the region. You kind of see the Arctic boundary hung up right across the Washington, British Columbia border, across Idaho, down into western Montana as well as Pacific moisture continues to stream in. You could end up having some huge snowfall amounts for some given areas underneath this scenario, especially for the mountain regions. And then finally, that starts to kick through as we go way off into fantasy land. So what you're going to see here sometimes is the GFS 10 to 1 total snow ratio here. So you got to throw this in the trash. You got to know what you're looking at here when you see some of these maps shared, because this is unlikely to verify here, you know, six inches for Seattle. It could, uh, again, it's plausible something like this could develop. But right now, the 10 to 1 snow ratio is not what you want to be looking at at all much more realistic would be to look at snow depth. So even if the GFS verifies, this is a, probably the higher end that you're going to be looking at for some of these snowfall amounts. And you can see an inch or two maybe as we go on through the extended forecast. But again, this is really just kind of a guess forecast at this point. We really have to watch this. It's going to be a big nowcast situation as we get closer to this event on how this Arctic air gets down and if it gets down into our region. Now, taking a look at the 12Z European, I'm just going to let this run through because I had this backup plan going of my weather.us account. And again, you can see this upper level low tracking down the coastline. It gets pretty darn right close. The very chilly upper level low there kind of, again, dancing around over the Pacific Northwest. This, I brought this up just in case the other one wasn't running. I'm going to check to see if it was, but it shows kind of precipitation type. And again, the upper level low spinning precariously close here to bring in some lower elevation snowfall. Again, depending on how much that Arctic air can make its way out and moisture rides back up over that. And this is 850 millibar temperature. So you can see it really on the move across northern portions of British Columbia. It really gets down into central BC, very cold air. But again, how much of that will work out into the lower elevations of western Washington? How far will that Arctic boundary get across eastern Washington into Oregon and Idaho and Montana as well? All questions that we have to answer over the next few days. Now, this is the spaghetti chart of the 500 millibars here. So we're looking at the European ensemble members, and you can see pretty good model agreement. That this polar lobe is it, on the way here, and you can see it again. Pretty good agreement, actually, with the control. The gray underneath there is the control run, and you can see the ensembles are in fair agreement that this is going to be coming. It's going to be close, and man, this is just going to be a nightmare forecast that is going to have to be broken down day by day, almost hour by hour as this upper level low gets closer to the region. And also some other help is coming into the short range here in a mo well, the short range models will be coming into agreement or not agreement, but you'll they'll be coming into visibility here with that polar lobe here. And if we go the North American model all the way up to 84 hours, you can kind of see that approaching as well. So very high confidence in this polar lobe coming somewhere close to the Pacific Northwest here. This does not at all look like a February 1989 or a December 1990 track where you're just getting a vigorous, vicious polar lobe ripping across the region. But this can still cause some disruptive problems, even for lower elevations, again, depending on the track. So national blend of models, you can kind of see that trend here is initially, again, these frontal systems are going to be kind of rainy for uh, lower elevations, mountain snows, and then you can kind of see the models kind of hedge in their bets here with some chillier overnight low potential and some of these cooler daytime uh, lows, uh, highs. Uh, so I want to take a look here at the European now, and we're going to go to Pacific Northwest. Let's see, let's go to regions. We'll go to Pacific Northwest. And I don't know why it's being so small here, but yeah, weather belt's been having some issues. The last, there we go, the last couple of days here, these have been extremely slow to load. So I'm going to put this into motion. Let's, it looks like it's working now here. Man, I was in trouble, having trouble all morning with this. But you can see initially the frontal system does arrive as we go through the day Thursday. Again, mountain snows, heavy at times possible as we go through the day Friday. The precipitation continues through Friday night on into Saturday. Again, rain for the lower elevations. You notice how things start to cool down and some of this trying to go out into some of the lower elevations. You might start to see some flakes starting to mix in. Convergent zone potential north of Seattle there. We'll see how that goes. We'll 
watch this trend as well. You want to watch out for those bands coming down towards Anacortes there and just north of Everett from Marysville as we go through Sunday morning. Chillier air aloft is move, making its way in at this point. And then we scroll off out into Monday and Tuesday. And you can kind of see this. There's some snowfall floating around here, depending again on how much of this cold air can make its way down into the area. But the European, definitely probably much more of a realistic solution at this point versus the um, GFS model. So let's go to surface moisture. And I do want to check this out. I want to see if any of this Arctic air is leaking out. So don't pay attention to this stuff just yet. We're not worried about these dew points. We're going to get flooded with some Pacific Ocean air as we go on in through Thursday night into Friday. You see the dew points rise into the mid 40s there for Seattle. And then we start to watch for that Arctic air. There it goes. It starts to sag south as we go on in through the day Saturday. Look at these dew point temperatures really fall off a cliff for the interior of British Columbia. That's that cold Arctic air up there. And then we look to see what happens here. Does any of this leak out? Is this upper level low? drops down. You can see some of these dew points really drop off. You might be getting some outflow here. We'll check next on that. But see these dew points drop off. That could be some of that drier, cooler air making its way in. Then you get this upper level low spread and precipitation around there. This is just going to be an absolutely crazy forecast as we go on into the early portion of next week. If what these models are showing now is going to be coming into fruition. And we'll take a look at the surface wind here, 100 meter wind speed. So uh, again, I want to take a closer look and see this is the problem. You can see the 06Z data, the 12Z data not even running yet here. So I guess we will have to wait on that one unless we can check upper level winds let's go ahead and check that 925 millibars is this the 12z that is not that is the 06z and no help so yeah the upper level winds have not been loading at all and in fact maybe we can do something like this and i will zoom in here and we will go to uh, and we're not going to switch members but we want to change parameters and we're going to go to all and we're going to go to Wind gusts in direction, we'll go to mean wind speed here and we'll bounce back up because I would really like to see what the 12Z has for any kind of outflow coming back down across the region. So this is January 30th. So here we are scrolling in here. We're going to have, this is on Friday, you know, the frontal system going through. You can see the winds are southerly here across the region. So we scroll on in. I'm going to scroll ahead a bit further here and we're going to go all the way out towards, okay, we're going to wait until we can see some kind of a, change here you can see we've got that upper level low it's right here we don't see the outflow just yet but there it goes there is some fraser river outflow starting to develop there and you can kind of see it pushing down across the strait um it depends on how cold that flow is i don't know if that would start to create the olympic mountain magic snow zone there by uh, port angeles but yeah we are starting to get some of these north winds down across the region so yeah that's kind of an interesting look there some of that arctic air is trying to leak out into the area you can see it coming down the okanagan river valley there as well the purcell trench also so yeah the arctic boundary may be starting to spread some of that cooler air so yeah very very dynamic setup coming up here we'll have to pay very close attention to this but anyway i'm kind of rambling on a bit here again some of the short range models will be coming in to help there. Hopefully Weatherbell can get this stuff fixed sooner rather than later. Otherwise, uh, check back tomorrow and check back on Twitter, X Seattle Weather Guy and on Blue Sky. I'll be doing some updates there if something crazy shows up during the day today. But otherwise, I will talk to you guys again tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good day.